Hey friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about how to reduce visual clutter. Now, first of all, what is even visual clutter? So visual clutter is basically things that are in your home that are visually disturbing. It, it just seems like your home is cluttered even though you might not have that much stuff. So I guess it's a lot also about interior design, how to place your stuff so that it doesn't overwhelm you or your mind, just in an effort to create a more relaxing and zen and clean space that does not stress you. For me personally, I found out that even though I've been steadily reducing the number of stuff that I own on my journey to less, I found that still sometimes my living space looks a little cluttered and I wondered to myself, okay, but I'm getting rid of more and more stuff. Why does it still seem like I have a lot of stuff? And a lot of it also just comes down to how to arrange your things. And we're even going to apply these tips to my space specifically. So I'm really excited and let's jump on right into the tips. So tip number one is to reduce open space storage. Now this is something that I've had to also learn through my own experience. So in the beginning when I moved out, I had bought this open shelf system that I think a lot of people have and I found that the room just immediately looks more cluttered. As you guys know, I am a minimalist, so I'm not too big on decor and things like that. So I'm not someone that will style a shelf with random decor pieces. Things I have on my shelf will be things that I need on a regular basis. A bunch of different shapes, a bunch of different colors. It really attracts the eye in a negative way. Your brain is trying to process all that color, all those shapes and a lot of busyness going on there. Going forward, I would personally try to opt more towards closed storage spaces. But I do understand open storage can be really beautiful, but it's then about storing your things in a smarter way. If I really, really want an open storage, then I have to be really intentional. So try to go with neutral or similar colors on that open storage. And if it's, for example, in the kitchen, we used to have open storage in the kitchen. What we did is we decanted a lot of our food, so things like rice, lentils, whatever we need on a regular basis, and we store that in same looking glass containers. Now you don't have to go out and specifically buy coherent looking storage containers. What we oftentimes also did with our tea was we just repurposed glass containers and mason jars that you would get from, for example, marinara sauces or just beans, things you buy at the supermarket that already comes in a glass jar. Or for example, if you have open shelving with little knickknacks, you can gather that in a basket in a color that is more neutral and natural. And that way the things that are stored are a little more out of sight and not so in your face. So the next thing is to have a color palette in your room. Now this might sound a little overwhelming and complicated, but basically you just want to pick three to maximum five colors. I would personally maybe go more with three that you style your room with. So for me personally, I would go for white and natural wood tones and then maybe have green from the plants as kind of like an accent color, but you don't have to be too strict with this. So for example, if I have white, wood and green, I can, for example, have a piece of art that has some orange pieces, but that will then be the m main focus of the room. So you don't want to have a lot of exceptions when it comes to those colors but it's a great guideline to follow by. It just makes the room seem more put together and you're, you don't have a bunch of colors in your room where your mind and your eye is darting towards a lot of different directions. And Pinterest is a great resource to research. There's a lot of information out there on color palettes in a room. Just don't overwhelm yourself. So something for me that is a big, not eyesore, but a space where there's a lot of colors and a lot going on where it just looks cluttered is our bookcase. So we have a lot of books and books come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and colors. And it's something where your eye just draws towards 
immediately and it's really busy and it just makes the room seem a little cluttered. Now I've seen a lot of people arrange their books by color so make it look kind of rainbow like. I personally don't find that very smart. You're then pulling books out of categories and when you're looking for a book it's going to be a pain. You can only look for it if you know what color it is and you might not know what color the book you're looking for is. So I think it's still smart to organize your books by alphabet or category, something like that. Also, I've seen people turn their books around so that the open pages are face to the front. This way everything is somewhat white, warm, colored, and that looks really nice, but that's also, in my opinion, not a very smart thing to do. How are you going to find a book that way? So what I have come up with and not yet implemented, but I'm excited to, is to actually make book covers. So in the olden days, wealthy people often rebound their books into just their custom leather bounds. So that is how the bookshelves, if you think of old books, they all look pretty much the same. Now that's not an option necessarily for us nowadays a lot of times. So what we can do is make our own DIY paper slip cover you can put onto your books. Now you don't have to put this onto every single book you have. That might look a little weird if your whole bookshelf is just white or gray or whatever color you, color you choose. But what I would like to do is to pick out the books that stand out in a negative way. So for example, we have a lot of self-help books that are bright, bright, bright yellow, and also a lot of self-help books that are bright orange. And those colors are not very neutral. They pop out, not in a way that I would like. So I'm going to choose those specific books and make a cover for them. So basically how you fold your book cover is you want to map out how big your book is and then fold up the bottom and the top so that it matches your book size. And then you want to map out the sides as well. So fold in the sides so it is as book as big as your book when it is open. So I'm just mapping out the size. And when you've folded that in, you're basically done. So all you have to do is to is to put on the book cover. So for that, you want to slide in the cover into the folds left and right, and that's it. It's so simple, and what I love about this is that it's not complicated and there's no sticking involved. So you can take off the cover whenever you want. Just so that the whole bookcase is more cohesive color-wise. And I think that's a small step you can do that can make a really big difference. Also, I want to take a quick break and talk about my book club. So if you didn't know, I have a book club where we read a book a month, alternating fiction and nonfiction. And we even have a discussion at the end of the month where we get together online through a video call and discuss the book. I also like to prepare some worksheets just so that the book kind of stays in your head more and it's just a lovely community and I always love hearing you guys' input. So if you're interested to join the book club, then the link will be down below. Now the next tip is to group things into threes. So this is an interior design rule that I found in an interior design book. It's something that is very pleasing to the eye. So instead of having maybe two things on your coffee table or four things, instead have three things. And also what is often recommended interior design wise is to have those things at different heights. So like a staircase kind of thing and that way it seems more harmonious to the eye and yeah that's something i'm going to try out in my space as well also a way you can group things is to group them on a tray i know that this is something that is talked about a lot but i did that as well in our old kitchen with our olive oil and salt and pepper things like that it just makes it seem more intentionally put there instead of just 
strewn to the side so that is a really great tip as well and you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a specific tray you can even just have something like a placemat where you group your things on just something where the eye feels like there that is the intentional space for these items another tip that is also more of an interior design background is instead of having a lot of different small items that you display have one big item instead this is just logical having one big item seems less cluttered than a lot of small items so if you have a big space to fill for example on the wall have one big piece of artwork hanging there instead of a collage that can often make this space seem more cluttered than it is now the next tip is also one that you hear a lot and that is really obvious and that is to free up any um, open surfaces whether it's a counter or a dresser and something that I found through experience is that it's really difficult to keep those spaces clear because us as people we're lazy and we just tend to place things at the nearest convenient surface and if you have a lot of hip height surfaces like a chest of drawers then it's an easy place it's like a table where you can easily put down something so I would even go a step further and try to eliminate spaces where you can put stuff if that makes sense so instead of having a chest of drawers maybe have a tall closet so the tall closet is not something where you can just place something casually on top of so maybe also in your bedroom don't have an extra chair there because at least in my experience I found that that extra chair will just collect all the clothes and that is definitely an eyesore but if you eliminate that chair then you don't even have something where you can rest things on if that makes sense so that is something that I would definitely want to try and work towards to eliminate open surfaces as much as possible but if you do have open surfaces then try to keep them clear have a place for everything it takes the same energy to put it away in its proper place and then to put it on the open surface then last but not least this is kind of like a minimalism common sense thing is that less is more so if you feel like your space seems very cluttered maybe you do have a little too much stuff so revisit your things maybe there are some things you don't need less is more don't be scared that your space look will look too sterile because we're human we're not perfect we're going to have things lying around and we live there so it's not going to look sterile by default so i hope you found these tips helpful let me know in the comments down below if you have now implemented these things in your home it was so much fun to try to implement these into my space and hopefully this helped you in your journey towards less and has now given you a more calm and serene space in your home thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye